the direction of movement is still going in the same direction, which is more adoption. You know, uh, certainly none of the chain, none of the developments this year in Canada or the U.S. of having Bitcoin ETFs is going to slow it down. I think it provides a lot of cover for people. Again, back to that career risk um, thought to say, you know, I I need to understand cryptocurrencies. I need to start considering using them in my practice. And maybe I maybe I start to do that in a small way. I'm going to start to look at how do I handle things like the volatility of the price? How do I handle, um, you know, how do they how do they correlate or don't correlate with other things that I'm holding? So all that kind of work is being done. Um, you know, Eric, you mentioned uh, a good point that the early slug of flow was probably people really waiting for it and the traders, which means that's not the audience that is now maybe doing that analysis. I think they were ready to go prior to the launch of Beto, and I think they were ready to go in Canada back in February as well. So you, you, you have a different set of investors now who are looking at cryptocurrencies and they can't ignore them. And there are a few things that have jumped out at us when we've been talking to large institutions in Canada since we launched uh, EBIT, our Bitcoin ETF back in February. Um, the, the, the thing that really surprised me was just how well educated these folks are. So we were talking to portfolio managers of very large institutions who were not currently holding any cryptocurrencies and they had done a ton of research. They had teams that had been working on cryptocurrencies for quite a long time. They were thinking about Bitcoin as digital gold. They're thinking about Ether as sort of a digital VC on the future of decentralized finance. So they figured out where it fits into their practice. All of that work has kind of happened and, and, and maybe is under, um, it's not as well known as, as, as maybe we might expect because we're not yet seeing it show up in the disclosed financial statements of those portfolios. So you might think, well, they're just, they're not paying attention and, and quite the opposite, absolutely paying attention. Um, so I think the uh, regulatory green light has been given. Um, I've, I've learned more about what the regulators care about this year than I have learned in my entire career prior to this year. And that includes, I mean, not uh, that includes Canada. In the US, I knew almost nothing and now I have some information about the 40 Act and the 33 Act, most of which I've learned from Eric on uh, on his reporting on the subject. Um, so people know what the regulators are looking for. That helps them with their own compliance and their own thinking around what to do, right? You know, it's easy when you can look at the rules somebody else is setting and that, those rules are coming from a, um, a, a, a reliable source to then map that to your own practice. So all of this stuff comes together. Um, and uh, um, that's why I think, you know, we're still very early but I think we have kind of had the green light um, go off um, as a result of these launches.